Hello class, Professor Anderson here. Uh, let's talk about something called the uh, bulk modulus, and this is a change in the volume of a material. So, what does this mean? Well, let's say I take a box, a cube, and now I start to push on it from all sides. Okay, as I do that, each side will contract a little bit, and the box will, in fact, get smaller. Okay, this is not drawn to scale, of course, but as I push on it from all sides, the box gets smaller. So this is described by something called the bulk modulus. And the reason that you want to be concerned about this is if you're going to build a submarine, and you're gonna go underneath the ocean, you need to know how much that submarine is going to contract when it goes deep in the ocean and experiences a lot of pressure. Now you might think, well, the submarine's made out of steel. Is it really gonna shrink very much at all? And the answer is yes, it is enough to worry about in your design of that submarine. So how do we deal with this? Well, the first thing that we need to uh, identify is what is the initial volume and what is the new change in volume. And that change in volume is, of course, due to the pressure from all sides on that box. All right, so what is the bulk modulus? The bulk modulus is defined as the following, negative delta P over delta V divided by V initial. This is again stress over strain, okay? The stress is the delta P. The strain is the change in the volume divided by the initial volume. Now what about this negative sign? The reason that we have a negative sign there is because we know the volume is going to go down. When you start to compress this thing from all sides, the volume gets smaller. And so you end up with a negative number down here, and that cancels with that negative sign up there. Your delta P is, of course, positive. You have increased the pressure on the outside of this thing. Now, the bulk modulus is another uh, material property, okay? So depending on what the box is made out of, it will have a particular value for bulk modulus. All right, so you wanna be concerned about this with things like submarines, but you also wanna be concerned about it with things like bridges and airplanes and anywhere that you have changes in pressure, you wanna be careful to properly analyze the bulk modulus. All right, so let's try a simple example of calculating the change in volume of a material as it goes under the ocean. So let's say we uh, examine the case where we take a solid ball of steel and we take it down to the bottom of the ocean. Okay, and let's see if we can calculate how much that steel ball shrinks. And let's say that the radius of the ball has a value of one meter. And we need to know the uh, bulk modulus of steel. And if you look that up in the book, the bulk modulus of steel is the following. It is 16 times 10 to the 10 newtons per square meter. All right, let's see if we can calculate delta V. All right, there's our equation. We can solve that for delta V. All right, what do we get? We get delta V is equal to, well, we just multiplied across by delta V over VI. We had to divide by B. So when I multiply across by VI, I can get my delta V. All 
All right, now, what is delta P? Well, if we go to a depth H below the surface of the ocean, then the pressure down there is equal to what it was at the surface plus rho GH. Yeah, it's just how much water is stacked up on top of you. So delta P is just gonna be rho GH, right? We started at atmospheric pressure, we end up with an increase of rho GH. What about V sub I? V sub I is the volume of the sphere. So we need to take that into account. So V sub I is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And I think that's everything we need. So now we can calculate delta V. Delta V is negative delta P over B times VI, which is negative rho G H times 4 thirds pi r cubed. And we're going to divide that by B, which we said was 16 times 10 to the 10. All right, let's plug in all those numbers and see what we get. And to be clear, let's write out the numbers here. So we have rho of seawater is a little bit bigger than pure water. So it's 1,030 kilograms per cubic meter. G is of course 9.8. H is what? Well, let's say that it is 10,000 meters down. So that's 10 to the four meters. Okay, this is close to the deepest point in the ocean. And now we have four thirds, we have a pi, radius we said was one, we're gonna cube one, which is still just one. And then we're gonna divide by B, which we said was 16 times 10 to the 10th. All right, let's run those numbers in our calculator and see what we get. Okay, so if you run those numbers, you should get a delta V of 0 0.0026 cubic meters, which doesn't sound like a whole lot, but that's because we started with a solid steel sphere. If you start with something that is hollow, say a submarine, then delta V um, can in fact be a significant amount of change in the radius of that submarine. So if you read about the uh, adventures of people like James Cameron to the bottom of the Marianas Trench, his submarine actually compressed by an amount of two and a half inches when it got to the bottom of the Marianas Trench. And if you're designing a submarine and you have to account for changes of two and a half inches, you gotta be very careful about that. All right, hopefully that's uh, clear, if not, Come see me in my office. Cheers.